It's my absolute privilege to introduce to you Dr. Uh, William Gregory, who is going to be talking to us about the key U.S. Pharma Commission's regulations for medicines. He's going to be looking at both the pre and post uh, approval, and he'll also be making some comparison to the EU regulations also. Um, Dr. Gregory has very kindly provided uh, this lecture for us for about three or four years now, so we are extremely grateful that he's able to join us in, as an expert on US regulations. So without any further ado, I'd like to just introduce to you uh, Dr. Gregory, and uh, would I like to ask him to, to start the lecture now. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Cheryl and Karen and all the rest of the uh, EU2P team. Uh, it's, it's a great honor for me to be here, and I'm glad to share some information about the, the situation in the U.S. So uh, let's move ahead and advance the, the, the slides, and, and uh, we have the standard uh, disclaimer and legal notices. What we uh, would like to do today is share information on the key uh, regulations and requirements for medicinal products that are active in the U.S. The global view of most regulators is to protect the public health. So with the objectives uh, being the same in Europe and US and Africa and China, uh, we have a common thread, but then, then there's a divergence in the specifics. So the detailed requirements are going to be a little different. So I try to compare the US situation with, uh, perhaps you're more familiar with the uh, situation in the EU. Uh, as Cheryl mentioned, pre-approval and post-approval are two separate activities that most regulators will separate into uh, different organizational features. Approval is the same uh, basically as authorization in Europe. The comments today will focus on small molecules, so I won't really deal too much with vaccines and I won't really deal too much with medical devices, but if you have questions, feel free to uh, ask them. The learning outcomes, uh, we expect everyone to have a conceptual understanding um, of the U.S. in the context of the EU. The, the overview of the uh, discussion today Talk about the authorities, primarily in the U.S., but also compare with the European situation. Separate pre-marketing and post-marketing. Then talk a little bit about risk management and some of the differences in Europe and U.S. And then talk about the essential quality management systems that we must have in place. And of course, a thread that strings through all of this is uh, compliance with the regulations and enforcement with penalties. In the US, FDA has the authority to make regulations which have the force of law, and it's uh, given to the, that authority is given to FDA by the US Congress, which is the elected body. The key mission is divided into three parts. Again, we mentioned protecting the public health, ensuring safety of human and veterinary drugs. So that's similar to uh, EMA's role, but FDA has the authority to approve and, uh, or, or restrict a medication. That's a little different than in Europe, whereas EMEA or EMA uh, does not have that authority. That is with the Commission for Central Products, and then of course each nation has its own system as well. Note that in the FDA's mission, they focused on tobacco, and one of their key roles is to reduce tobacco use, so nicotine dispensers, uh, and that is something that there's a very heavy regulation uh, coming into force at the moment. One of the more important roles is interaction with the public. So communication using evidence-based information uh, on how best to use medicines. Uh, FDA started in 1861, so it has a long history, had a few name changes, uh, and it has about 15,000 staff. So it's uh, about 15 times larger than EMA, for example. 